good morning to you on this fine winter's morning. Now, we're in the middle of December and we're going to head down to London today and as, and as a result we can carry out a winter range test on our Model X. So we're going to do roughly around about a thousand miles round trip in the cold and uh, what we'll find is how efficient the Model X is in the winter months. Now we did a 5,000 mile summer test, summer range test during the summer this year. So it'll be quite interesting to see how much the range declines in the winter. Now there will be a decline, it's just a case of by how much. So next stop on the motorway. So what we're going to do is stick to the speed limit. So the maximum speed we'll be doing is 70 miles an hour or less depending on the depending on the road. So this is the first stop. We are at T-Bay Services South in England now and uh, we've travelled 156 miles and our average consumption is I think 431 watt hours per mile which is the equivalent of 2.3 miles travelled per kilowatt hour. Now that's very inefficient but the temperature has not risen above minus three degrees Celsius. So uh, it's a very chilly morning. Uh, so we'll see how we progress with the rest of the journey. Hopefully the efficiency will rise, but that's only going to rise if the temperature rises. So next uh, stop will be somewhere along the M74 and uh, we'll catch up with you then. Now these superchargers here, they've all been replaced just recently. They all used to be 150 kilowatt chargers, but now they've been replaced with V3 uh, 250 kilowatt chargers. But that doesn't make any difference to our car, because our car is quite old. It's about three years old, it's a Model X. And uh, the maximum these cars will recharge at is 150 kilowatts at a time. So, whereas the Model 3 behind me and the Model Y here, which I'm just passing, they'll recharge at up to 250 kilowatts. So certainly beneficial to them. So let's have a quick look at the charge inside and uh, let's take it from there. Now one thing that is disappointing about the car is that we've travelled all the way from Edinburgh to T-Bay which is about 150 miles and the windscreen wipers or the windscreen washers are still frozen even though they're supposed to have a heated bottle in them. So they don't work very well in the cold weather, that's about the only downside so far. Um, but hopefully that will uh, remedy itself through time. So anyway, that's enough for this stop. Uh, let's get onto the motorway and we'll meet you at the next recharge stop somewhere down the M6. So we've just left um, the T-Bay services and we're heading down the M6 now. Now the temperature is still minus five degrees Celsius. Um, so it's still very cold. That's about 26 degrees Fahrenheit, if not colder than that, I think. I'll put the exact the exact temperature on the screen below. Now, it's only now that the windscreen wiper uh, pipes have defrosted after I put some uh, some hot water on them, so that is a bit frustrating, but that's about the only fault that we've had with this car so far. But also, the fall in efficiency is quite dramatic. I mean, we did a, a 5,000 mile journey during the summer, and we averaged about 3.1 miles traveled per kilowatt hour, and right now I've measured it and it comes in at about 2.3 miles travel per kilowatt hour. So quite a considerable difference, but I think that will change as we, as we head down south. As the temperature rises, that should make a little bit of a difference, but we'll soon find out once we get to the end of our journey. Now whilst we're here, I thought we'd demonstrate how the autopilot works on this car, and that really is probably the best feature of all Teslas, is the autopilot system. Now, what I'll show to you is how it changes lane and it's very straightforward. All you have to do is touch the stop once and the car will effectively change lane for you. Now you're supposed to have your hand on the steering wheel all the time so effectively all I'm doing is resting my hand on the steering wheel and it's doing the rest. And to change back again all you do is you touch the indicator stop again and it should change lane by itself and the indicator will switch off by itself once it's changed lane. 
but as I said before, you should have your hand on the steering wheel at all times. But you have to be providing just a little bit of torque on the steering wheel all the time, and it won't give you any warnings. But what autopilot does, as I said before, it takes the stress out of driving. You don't feel fatigued after driving several hundred miles because you're not having to concentrate on the road at all. Oh, sorry, you're not having to concentrate on the road as much. Um, so therefore, you feel less tired and less fatigued after a journey of a few hundred miles. Now the, now the term autopilot is, I think, often misunderstood. Now if you are flying an aeroplane, an autopilot system will not fly the plane for you. It's an aid to the pilot. And in this case, it's an aid to the driver. So the car is, take, is doing the heavy lifting, there's no doubt about that. But you still have to be alert. And you still have to be control of the vehicle effectively. So don't think autopilot is a, is, an, is a fully autonomous system. It's not. It's a driving aid which aids you to drive safely. And quite frankly, it can drive better than most drivers. In fact, it can drive better than me. So, I mean, I'm not saying that's a gold standard or anything, but what I'm saying is that it'll center the car better than the average driver in my view. So bear in mind, it's not a fully autonomous system, but it is an excellent driving aid and that it'll keep the car a safe distance from the vehicle ahead and also it will center the car perfectly in the, in the lane and it will aid you overtaking uh, and uh, changing, uh, changing highways as well. Now there are three types of autopilot in the, in the Tesla family. There is a standard autopilot which you get in every car and what that does is that it keeps a distance from your vehicle to the car ahead and it also keeps the car perfectly centered in the lane. That's standard on all cars. Then you move up to enhanced autopilot, which will effectively do what I said before, but it will help you change lanes and it'll help you change highways. It also has a summon mode on it, which doesn't really work in the UK. And it also does parallel parking and bay parking. And then after that, you get FSD, which stands for full self-driving. And what that does is that if you enter your destination on the, on the sat-nav, the vehicle should take you to your destination through city streets as well, not just on highways, without any interventions. And that's what the goal is. Now, they've been saying they'll get there for quite a few years now, but uh, the target is, uh, from what I've heard, is that they should get there sometime in 2024. And then what they will do is they'll roll it out into every other country that uh, sells Teslas. Now, in the UK, FSD is not available, but in the US, that's the only place that is available. But as I say, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the near future, we should have an answer. And if it doesn't happen in 2024, it will happen perhaps in the short term. But um, that's, the, that's the target of, for, for all vehicles. And then once that happens, it should make driving considerably safer, no matter which country you're in. Now, if you look at the statistics, um, if your car is an autopilot, you're less likely to be involved in a collision. And I'll put some stats up on the screen right now, which shows that you're about eight or nine times less likely to have a collision on the highway if you are using autopilot and I can quite believe that because I've actually experienced that myself and there was a time when I was driving and I was feeling a bit drowsy I woke up the car was going around a curve at 70 miles an hour so had autopilot not been engaged at that time I would have gone into the crash barrier had an accident and worse still would have perhaps injured someone else as well so I have experienced it firsthand and uh, it does it is an excellent driving aid and um, so it does work actually so if you are using if you do have a tesla and you don't use autopilot you really should and if you haven't experienced it take it for a test drive and uh, you'll soon find out what i'm what i'm referring to so anyway that's enough about autopilot um, next stop hopefully we'll be at uh, the Birmingham's, birmingham supercharger and uh, we'll have a we'll catch up with you there so here's a question for you. There's two Range Rovers ahead. The one on the right is the newer model. The one on the left is the older model. Which one looks better? Personally, I think the old model looks far nicer than the new one. But as I said, comments below if you want to give us your opinion. So we're approaching our second charging spot, which is Hopewood Park, just south of Birmingham. And we're getting there with only five miles range, so we're cutting it a bit thin, but uh, 
I thought it would be better just to skip the last charging spot and make it to this one. So we've only got five miles of range left, but that's still enough uh, enough energy to get there. And plus, remember, once you get to quite a low rate of charge, you still have a little bit of a buffer, but although you shouldn't really take that for granted. So uh, the second stop, we've done about 180 miles since our last uh, charge. And uh, so this will be the last charge until we get to our destination. Now, had the weather been a lot better, um, because the temperature is only about four degrees at the moment, but had the temperature been a bit warmer, uh, we would have probably made it here on a single charge. And that's the difference between cold weather and, um, and good weather. So anyway, next stop uh, is the charging station at uh, Hopewood. And after that, we're heading straight down to London. We've stopped here with five miles of charge. And what we're going to do, we're going to time it to see what kind of charge we get within 30 minutes. Now, the, bear in mind, the maximum charge here will be 130 kilowatt hours. That'll be the peak. And after that, it will uh, uh, feather down. So the time now is at 12.29. By the time we get charged, it'll be about 12.31 or 12.30. And we'll see what the charge rate is. Um, not the charge rate. We'll see what mileage we gather within 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes or 29 minutes, we have gained 170 miles worth of charge or 168 miles by the time it gets to 30 minutes it'll be about 170 but that would be actually higher if this were a v3 charger now i'll just show you what i mean now because these chargers are v2 chargers um, they only go up to a max of 150 kilowatt charge rate but the but the issue is this these chargers are shared so if someone parks up next to you your charge rate will decline whereas with the v3 the charge rate will remain constant so this is this is um stall 6a and my one is on stall 6b so had someone not plugged in here the charge rate would be higher so that's the issue but as i said with the new v3 supercharger that issue has been resolved now the thing about this site is that there are also 16 third-party chargers as well and what's happening is that these third-party chargers are very effective as well in that you don't have to be a member of a club or anything you just effectively tap your card and uh, start charging and that's uh, that's exactly what we need but the, but the issue with these chargers is that how efficient not so much efficient but how reliable are they now with the Tesla supercharger network it's proven to be 99.7% sorry 99.97% reliable and the 99.9% 99.97% of the stalls are always operational now that's not always the case with third party chargers and in some cases they're sometimes more than 50% of them are unoperational but uh, as i said these ones seem to be quite reliable and hopefully this is the shape of things to come so we've just unplugged from our uh, stall at uh, Hopewood Park and this is the detail, this is the uh, sorry, information so far. So we've travelled 329 miles on 131 kilowatts, so that's equivalent of 398 watt hours per mile, which is the equivalent of 2.51 miles travelled per kilowatt hour. So as you can see, it's actually increased quite significantly since the temperature has risen. So as you can see, the temperature is now 4 degrees Celsius rather than negative 4 degrees Celsius. And uh, that has obviously increased the efficiency. But anyway, once we get to halfway point in London, we'll go over the figures again and uh, I'll meet you there. This is the problem with London. Traffic calming measures gone too far. Right, we've reached our we've reached our destination in Wembley in London where we were, where we were heading. So the distance travelled is 432 miles, travelled over 172 kilowatt hours, and at a rate of a consumption of 398 watt hours per mile. So what does that convert into? So if you divide one so 1,000 divided by 398 or, four or 432 divided by 172 
you get the same answer obviously, it works out to 2.51 miles travelled per kilowatt hour. And the maximum temperature is just now, which is 5 degrees Celsius. And that's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the maximum temperature. Most of the journey was... Um, Sorry, most of the journey was between three and four degrees Celsius, and that's that's winter driving effectively. Now, in the summer, for the same journey, we would probably get about 3.1 miles travelled per kilowatt hour, so not a huge reduction. But this is only half the journey, so we have to wait till we get back to Edinburgh. That's another 432 miles probably, and uh, we'll see what the end figure is. So, good morning, viewers. Today is a Thursday. December morning and it's very chilly. It's four degrees Celsius and this is day two of our range test in the Model X or rather our winter range test in the Model X. Now last night as you know we were in London and this morning we're heading off from Coventry. So last night we drove from London to Coventry just to break the journey a little bit to make it easier for us and so today we're going to head to Edinburgh. So the temperature at the moment is 4 degrees Celsius, which is about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Very chilly, but it is wet as well, and that's going to hinder our performance. But uh, as we head to Edinburgh, I'll keep you informed as in the progress that we're making. And uh, hopefully next time I'll meet you, we'll be on the motorway to Edinburgh. Now the state of the car after last night's drive is a bit... Uh, is a bit dirty but uh, nothing that can't be remedied later on so uh, we'll give it a good wash afterwards and we'll show you the final results so this morning it is as I said earlier 4 degrees Celsius that's what the car is showing and uh, that's 38 degrees Fahrenheit I think and this is the remainder of our journey so we are currently in Coventry which is just uh, east of Birmingham and so we're going to head along the M6 all the way up the west side of England until we come to and the sat nav is saying from Abington when we're in Scotland we should head up the A702 now that's a not a nice uh, drive that one it's a single carriage road and I really don't want to drive on that so what we will probably do is head up the M74 turn right and then head uh, east to Edinburgh and uh, that should take us a few hours um, the next stop is a supercharger called Charnock Richard, which is uh, up here beside Preston, and that should take us about a two and a quarter hours. Now we're not heading off, um, it's quarter to nine now, but we'll probably head off about half past nine, and uh, I'll keep you informed of the journey as we go. So we're stuck in traffic on the M6 at the moment, but this car just caught my eye. This is an MG, right in front of me, and it looks ex very similar. This is an MG HS, and it looks very similar to a BMW X3, especially from the rear end. That is, I mean, I thought it was an MG. I thought it was an X3 actually until I looked a bit closer, but that is just astonishingly similar to an X3. I don't know what your opinion is. But uh, now let me know what your opinions are, obviously. But uh, that looks astonishingly close to an M3, not an M3, an X3 rather. Anyway, we're stuck in the M6. Um, we're just about 10 miles out of Coventry, actually, in north north of Birmingham now. But uh, hopefully, next stop, as I said earlier, was Charnock Richard, and I'll catch up with you there. Now uh, we're at Charnock Richard service station here, or supercharging station. Now what you find is, this is really quite a busy supercharging station. And what happens is when you're sharing a V2 charger, you're only getting part of the charge. So we're charging at 74 kilowatt hours because we're sharing a charger with another car. Now if, there were, if this were a V3 or a V4, that wouldn't be the situation. So that's what, they're, that's what the state of play is here at the moment. But the thing is, eventually all these v2s are going to get changed to v3s and they've been doing that quite actively throughout the uk so hopefully it's only a matter of time before they change this one as well so next stop will be edinburgh um next stop will be edinburgh so i'll catch up with you then so i'm on the last leg of our journey 
and as you can see it is really pouring down with rain it's four no it's not it's six degrees celsius now this is the highest temperature it's actually been but it's pouring down with rain and it is driving rain but we are ma managing to stick to 70 miles an hour on the motorway although you do get some people who want to go faster um so anyway um i'll see you at the other end and uh, summarize the journey then so here we are back in edinburgh and then get into the trip meter i'll just switch off the air conditioning so it quietens it down a bit so our final distance was 878 miles traveled 354 kilowatt hours of energy used and that's an average consumption of 403 watt hours per mile so if you want to convert that into how many miles travel all we do is divide 878 by 354 or 1000 divided by 403 and the figure that we get is 2.5 miles traveled per kilowatt hour now we did a similar test over 50 miles uh, it's over 48 miles just a few days ago and I thought that was too short a test and but remarkably we've come up with the same result um, it's uh, virtually the same same consumption so if you compare that to the summertime that's 22 percent less efficient in the winter temperatures over the summer temperatures and that's including starting from cold as well so um, so that's the conclusion that we've come to. Winter is definitely less efficient for an EV than summer test, but there's no surprise there. But the question was, by how much does the efficiency fall by? And the answer is, in this case, 22%. And temperatures were down to negative four, and they hovered around four degrees Celsius. Um, so that's the temperature range that we took this test in. On top of that, it was raining, it was windy. It just, um, that's the, that's the that's the efficiency decrease that you get over summer over, over winter so i hope that this answers a question for you that you've been asking and i hope you like and subscribe and uh, i'll see you in the next one